thank you, Mr. President. I also thank all the briefers today for their remarks. And I also thank the Russian delegation for calling this, uh, for this ARIA meeting, focusing on the economic challenges that face the people of Afghanistan. India has direct stakes in ensuring the return of peace and stability in Afghanistan, given our own position as a contiguous neighbor and long-standing partner of Afghanistan, as well as our strong historical and civilizational linkages with the Afghan people. It might be noted that prior to the takeover by the Taliban, India had been implementing projects and programs with a commitment of over $3 billion U.S. dollars aimed towards development, reconstruction, and capacity building in Afghanistan. Our development partnership encompassed people-centric projects in all the 34 pro provinces of Afghanistan and were aimed at making Afghanistan a self-sustaining nation. We also operationalized air freight corridors and the Chabahar port to enhance regional con connectivity to Afghanistan. However, the change in the political situation has resulted in slowing down of our projects for various reasons. Nevertheless, our commitment towards helping the people of Afghanistan remains unwavering and unchanged. India is deeply concerned at the unfolding humanitarian situation in Afghanistan. In response to the urgent appeals made by the United Nations and in response to the humanitarian needs of the Afghan people, India has dispatched several shipments of humanitarian assistance to Afghanistan, including 40,000 metric tons of wheat, 50 tons of medical aid, and 28 tons of other disaster relief material. These consignments have been handed over to the Indira Gandhi Children Hospital in Kabul, the Afghan Red Cross Society, and other UN specialized agencies. And in order to closely monitor and coordinate the efforts of various stakeholders for the effective delivery of assistance, and in continuation of our engagement with the people of Afghanistan, an Indian technical team has also been deployed at our embassy in Kabul. Our approach to Afghanistan, as always, will be guided by our historical friendship and our special relationship with the people. It was in this regard that we supported and welcomed the Security Council Resolution 2615, which provided a humanitarian carve-out from the 1988 sanctions regime. At the same time, it is also important to recognize that the international community continues to have concerns regarding the situation in Afghanistan. India's main priorities in Afghanistan include providing immediate humanitarian assistance for the people of Afghanistan, but also the formation of a truly inclusive and representative government, combating terrorism and drug trafficking, and preserving the rights of women, children, and minorities. These benchmarks were also set forth by the Security Council Resolution 2593, which guides the international community's approach towards Afghanistan. India is closely monitoring the situ security situation in Afghanistan and is actively engaged with our international with the international community in this regard. Terrorist attacks have targeted public spaces like places of worship and educational institutes, especially of minorities. This is a concerning trend, and India strongly con condemns the targeting of innocent civilians, as also the attack at the diplomatic premises of the Russian Federation. The collective approach of the com international community has been articulated, as I said, by the Security Council Resolution 2593, which unequivocally demands that the territory of Afghanistan should not be used for sheltering, training, planning, or financing terrorist acts, specifically against individuals and entities prescribed by the UN Security Council, including the LET and the JEM. Linked to the issue of terrorism is also the menace of drug trafficking. We have seized big shipments of drugs at our ports and in the high seas of our coasts. It's important to strengthen international cooperation to disrupt these networks. On the political front, we continue to call for an inclusive dispensation in Afghanistan, which represents all sections of the Afghan society. A broad-based, inclusive, and representative formation is necessary for long-term peace and stability in Afghanistan, and in turn, for economic recovery and development. Peace and security are critical imperatives that all of us need to collectively strive for. We, on our part, will continue to play our role in pursuit of this objective. The interests of the Afghan people will always continue to be at the heart of our efforts in the country. Thank you, Mr. President.